Happy Wednesday, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to Wednesday night at the Soul Factory by virtual Bible study. Amen. Um, I'm just so thankful to be here this evening um, to be in service and to just give my heart to God. And um, I'm thankful to have a clear mind and a clear heart today. You know, I know there's many things my mind and my heart can be on, but um, I'm thankful that it's on the Lord and he has kept me. I'm thankful that he's keeping you. Um, I pray that um, it's been a great day. It's been a great first three days of the week and um, you, are, you are having faith opportunities and um, opportunities to exercise your amazing faith and um, keeping God at the forefront and knowing that he's always working in your situation, you know, um, so I'm hoping that that's where you are today, and if you're not, I'm praying that God will give you a word tonight, and he will carry you through your tough times um, as he continues to be faithful, amen, amen, so let's go ahead and pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just I am so thankful for this evening. I'm so thankful for your word. I'm so thankful to be one of your servants, dear Lord. I am so thankful, Father God, to be able to fellowship with my fellow believers, Father God, in faith, Father God, that we are able to stand on your word, Father God. We are able to know, Father God, that you are seeking after us and you are drawing us, Father God, by your spirit. So I'm thankful to be a messenger of your word this evening, dear Lord, and I pray that it does exactly, Lord, what you intended it for it to do, God, in the hearer as well as, Lord, in me, your servant. I just thank you and honor you for today. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. <clears throat> like I said, we have been on um, Amazing Faith, and I'm not surprised that we have been on this series tonight will be part six. I'm not surprised that we've been on it and the spirit has us here for um, the past three or four weeks, um, just because, you know, it takes amazing faith to live in this world in this time right now. Um, and I'm thankful that he's giving us a word, you know, to, to, to continue to prepare us and to guide us and to lead us into a deeper understanding of what it, what it means to be sustained by him, by his word, by our understanding of him, by our knowledge of him, by our faith in him. So um, I looked up the, some, some synonyms for amazing. And what um, I got was astounding, surprising, and astonishing. And so when I was kind of putting that together, I was, I was saying, you know, as a believer, uh, to strive for righteousness, to do good and not repay evil for evil, to walk in peace and have it be beyond human understanding, to think on the word of God says, think on these things, to be able to think on things that are pure, that are true, that are lovely, that are excellent, that are praiseworthy, to do all those things. It takes amazing faith because we're not superhuman. It takes amazing faith to be able to do those things, to strive for his righteousness, to strive to be in good standing and right standing with him. Meaning God, you know, I'm, I'm here and I'm doing my best in you to carry this thing forward. And for that, it takes an amazing faith, you know, um, something that's just astonishing and astounding because if we take our eyes off of him and look in this world, it, 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 it has an impact on how we, we, we show up. It has an impact on what we think about humanity. It has an impact on how we feel, you know, all those things when we take our eyes off of him and put our eyes on all these things that are going on around us. So I'm hoping that you're, you're taking away a lot of nuggets, you know, the things that you can put in your spiritual toolkit. I was talking to my um, godson uh, yesterday and day before he called me and I had um, given him and his sister a workbook and it was called the, um, the Armor of God. And it was a team workbook or a student workbook or something like that. And I had wrote captions inside the heading for both of them. And so he called me to thank me, um, but he was kind of giggling. He's 14, 15, uh, he's 15. And he was kind of giggling, and um, and I said, "Well, what's so funny?" You know, and he said, "Well, I mean, this dude on here got a sword, he got a shield. You know, he looked like he <laughs> he about some things." 
And I said, well, amen. I said, like I said in the caption, you know, the world is going to give us a lot of tools to show up. You know, we got communication tools and relationship tools and, to, and, and uh, uh, skills to work and all these things. But it, it takes spiritual tools to be able to live this life out. And if we don't know them, if they're not sharp, if we don't have access to them, or if we are not in full understanding of how to use them, and if we are not equipping ourselves with them, we, we, we're not going to make it. And I said, so um, I'm giving you that as your, 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 your uh, instructional manual with the word of God in order to help you get a little further in where you are. So, and then I said, and you know, as I always do, amen. And he was like, well, amen sound like you like whatever. And I said, nah, amen just basically means it's going to be what it's going to be, you know, because at, at, at some point in time, we got to choose you, choose this day. And you are going to choose to pick it up and do what you got to do or you not. And that's an amen to me because I believe God is, God is going to carry you where he has to. And so then he says, well, amen. <laughs> so anyway, you know, amazing faith is a tool, you know, it's a tool. You know, and God is saying, if you pull out some of these tools that I'm giving you, and if you show up in an, an amazing way, you'll be amazed where that will take you in sustaining you and getting you from where you are to where I'm trying to take you. So, um, like I said a minute ago, faith, you know, having amazing faith doesn't mean you're superhuman because, you know, most of us, if we don't have them, we know people who do, we have heartaches and sorrows and we feel the pressures of life. We, we may feel lonely. We may be suffering various things. And, you know, I talk to so many people and some of the suffering is, it's heavy, you know, it's heavy suffering. And to the point where there's not, there are no words that can um, solve or problem solve or, or to be a, 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 a balm to them, meaning a, a, a healing agent to them. There's no words because it's really happening. They're really suffering. But, you know, being able to comfort and being able to sit with someone and being able to share, you know, where God has brought you from and how he has carried you in times where you didn't know how you were going to get, get out of that situation mentally, emotionally, or physically, um, being able to share that level of faith and testimony can, can, can be a life preserver for somebody. You know, and it's a trick of the enemy for us to remain silent, for us to see the suffering and things that are going on and for us to not do anything about it, you know, and thinking that, well, that's that's their business or, you know, well, what could I possibly say? Because it's what I could say seems so small in the in the uh, the scope of what this person may be, be experiencing. Um, and, you know, words are small. But words said in faith are mighty. Words are small. They have no power in and of themselves. But words said in faith can be mighty. It can move mountains. It can change hearts and minds. It can, it can speak life into a situation. And, that, and that's where we are right now. Because we, 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 have, to, we have to believe big. <laughs> right now in this evil world, we got to believe big. We got to trust big. We got to rest in God in a big way. And we have to be that light in this world. We have to be willing to be that light in this world. <clears throat> so um, I put on here this paper, my paper. I said, amazing faith is our response to a great God in the midst of a falling world. Amazing faith is our response to a great God in the midst of a fallen world. Because we live in this fallen world, this fallen world that is dying every single day. We live in this world, but amazing faces, even though I'm in this fallen, dying world, and I see all these things, that I have faith in the God, in the character of the God who's bigger than all of this. You know, his character, his sovereignty, his trustworthiness. I trust him in all these things. You know, his faithfulness, he's faithful to care, to contend, to sustain us, to save us. God is faithful in that, you know, and so I'm trusting in that great God. 
My faith is in that great God in this, this small fallen world, even though it, sometimes it appears to be so big. Sometimes this world appears to be so big because the things, you know, it's like a, it's like a, a weight, like a pressure. Like when something falls, it just, it's like dead weight, like a fallen world. It's like dead weight. It feels like dead weight sometimes, you know, but the word of God tells us we can cast our cares on him. You know, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. That's what the word says. And sometimes you got to be able to cast these cares on something that can take it. You know, we, we, may, we may try to put it on people or we may try to blame or we may try to shift energy and do all these things. But God said, cast, cast your cares on me. They don't understand. And if they do, they understand in part. I understand it all because I'm sovereign. I understand it all and I can be trusted with it. I understand it all and I can save you in it. He's that type of God. He's that great. He's that great. And um, I said here, amazing faith is meant to be our worship. Are you worshiping God through your faith? Because sometimes um, it's like an offering. It's my offering to you, God. I can't, I can't give you, I can't give you anything for the, like, like Jill said, the amazing grace that you've given me. But I can be an, I can't give you an offering. I can offer my faith back to you in an amazing way. I can give my faith back to you in that kind of way. It could be my worship. It could be a, 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 a sweet aroma to you. You know, it could, it, could, it, could, it could put a smile on your face. <laughs> you know, it's like your child trusting that you got it, you know, and then they're like, nah, I ain't got to really stress because if, you know, my, my, one of my friends used to say at, at my old job, you know, my dad used to say, if I don't look stressed, then you don't need to be stressed. You know, and I'm sure y'all heard that before. But, you know, I know my God ain't stressed about this. So if he ain't stressed, I don't got to be stressed. You know, but in that faith, it's a sweet aroma to him. So my baby ain't stressing about this. She may be feeling it. She may be being impacted by it. She may be pressured by it. But she ain't stressed about it. Not over what she knows that I'm going to do. Not over what she knows I am doing. You know, that's, that's the worship that we're offering to him with this amazing faith. That's the worship we're giving to him. You know, um, the scripture says, if, if you lift up the Lord, he said, and I be left, lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. That's what I mean by worship. I'm lifting him up. But when I lift him up, my, my worship, my praise, my testimony for what he's done, me glorifying him over another choice. There's other choices I can make that are not glorifying to God, but that's me lifting him up. And he said, I'll do, I'll do the rest of the work. I'll draw men to you. I'll draw men to me if you lift me up. You don't have to do that work. You're working too hard <laughs> on men. I, tr trust me when I say, you know, we just, we have a saying in counseling that say, never work harder than the client. Never work harder than the client. You are working too hard for a work that is God's work. It's God's work. He just said, lift me up. Felicia, lift me up. Glorify me. Praise me. Shine, shine my light. Be it, sh sh share your testimony. Do those things, and I'm going to draw all men to me. I'm going to do that work so you don't have to take the weight of that on because that can be some frustrating stuff. <laughs> that can make you <laughs> quit, you know, fooling with people, you know. But trusting in God, that's, that's a whole, that's, 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 a, that's, a, that's a lighter, that's, that's a lighter path. That's a smoother journey. <laughs> um, and I said here, there's many hurt and lost people wanting to know that there's something else. There are many hurt and lost people wanting to know that there's something else, wanting to know that there is, there is an example of something else, wanting to see something else, because they see a lot of stuff. <clears throat> but there's a lot of hurt and lost people wanting to know there's something more to all of this. They, they're people who want to hear, as we have talked before, the good, they want to hear the good news. Is there some good news? 
Is there something else you know that I don't know? Because I can't do this. You know, and the answer as a believer, yes, there is something more. There, there is something more. Let me share it with you. Let me tell you what it is. Let me give you a tool. So there are perspectives that can bring life and there are perspectives that can bring death. And we have to decide if we are an agent of what? Like, what am I bringing perspective to? What am I giving life to? You know, or, or, what, or what am I doing that I could be inserting death into a situation? You know, that is, that is there's, some, there's, there's adjustments that we have to make. And um, we have to know the impact of what we are doing or not doing. You know, we, we're not just having frivolous conversations. You know, because a lot of us talk, you know, people go, go, you know, they go on back to work now. So you, you sitting around the job, you may have minor social distancing, but you got opportunities to talk and share. You're not just having random conversations. You are having either life-giving conversations or death-giving conversations, or you're speaking life into one, one area or another. And being mindful of that is, 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 is being in tune to what's happening, with being present with what's going on, walking and bringing your faith into a present way. You know, I was talking to one of my uh, girlfriends, you know, I'm sure we were having just a conversation, but she asked me something very loose because we weren't really talking about work or finances or anything, but she just said, well, hey, you know what, with all the stuff that's going on at your job, you know, um, does that make you feel some kind of way? Does that make you feel like, you know, you need to be, uh, <laughs> you know, she didn't insert a blank, you know, but, you know, you can kind of allude to like find a new job or do something different or whatever the case may be. And I said, well, um, and there are some things happening with my job and there's some, you know, and they've made some financial adjustments appropriately um, in the season that the world is in. Um, and, and that impacts people. That's just the bottom line. And so when you see things impact people um, and you are in a group, <laughs> um, you you know, the, you don't know if that's going to impact you, if it's going to make its way to your doorstep, you know. And I said to her, you know, they do pay me a salary. But if you know me, they are not my provider. I don't see them as my provider. And years ago, I'm thankful that God, um, he delivered me from that. You know, when I left a job and um, it was, I would call certain type of jobs, depending on how much income you make, to be golden handcuffs. I mean, you have, you have, uh, you are now bound to something because you have created a life or a lifestyle around what that job and the income from that job can offer you. So now you think that that job is providing you what you need um, and what you want. Um, so I said, that was my past, you know, um, and I pray that, you know, I, nothing, I am not impacted in various ways. I have been impacted in a minor way, um, but I'm, I'm praying that I'm not impacted in a major way. Um, however, I stand on the fact that they don't, they are not my provider. They just pay me a paycheck. And that is a life giving conversation. Because if the person asked you the question, they saw it as big, at least bigger than I did. So in me speaking life into that situation, that can create a seed and God can use that seed because I, I lifted him up. So now that can draw this person to him in their time of need. God, I believe that you can be my provider. If you did it for her, you can do it for me. I don't have to put this level of weight on this to get my needs or my wants because I believe that you can sustain me. I trust you with my story. And I wasn't always that way. Now, I had faith talk when I was younger, <laughs> probably about, um, my son could have been more than one. He's 22 now. And I, it was right after 9-11 and I worked at US, US Airways and the airlines got hit hard and they were just firing people left and right. They were cutting salaries left and right. They were doing all types of stuff. And we were in the tax department. It was probably uh, four of us. Um, 
in my at my my uh at my level okay not uh, higher levels but you know it was only one at each other level but four of my levels so it means you got you got a little bit of fat that you can lean off is my point today and the young lady kept saying that she was not a believer but we had been as a matter of fact she stated that she was an atheist but we had been talking about god for a significant period of time and she would always question certain things and i would you know share my faith with her and she she said Wait, you know, we're just gonna get fired we're gonna get fired i mean they're gonna fire us they're gonna fire us and she had been been let go or fired from a few different jobs before just based on industries going up and down and I said in my face talk at that time, oh, God ain't gonna find me because I'm a single mom and he know I need my job. So what, but he's not gonna happen. I know that I trust God that he gonna sustain my job. He gonna keep me, okay? And I gave her all his energy. And in that season, that was where my level of faith was. That God was not, he was going to ensure I did not get fired because I was a single parent and I needed my job to make sure that me and my son were provided for. Now, 20 years later, I'm saying, I want my job and I and I and and I'm thankful for the salary, but it is not my provider. He is. And if that so removes from my space, he's gonna put something else in my space to ensure that my needs are provided for. It I've gone from faith to faith to faith to faith. It's a, it's just a different, but it's not, it's it's but it is in the season. So whatever your faith level is, is my point in this conversation. Cause your amazing faith and my amazing faith are two totally different things. But God, he, it's, it's like that, that the, 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 the penny or the mite that the, that, the, that the person put in the offering. That, that penny for her, oh, that was big. That was all she had. So if all you have is to trust God in a certain way, and your faith language sounds different from mine, work your faith language. Because it's still an offering to him. It's still an offering to him. It still has impact. It's still worship. It's still, God, I trust in your character. I trust in your faithfulness to care for me, to sustain me, to save me. I trust in you, God, above all these other things. It's still the same. It still weighs the same to him. It still weighs the same to him. And we are meant to grow. We are meant to grow in our faith. You are not meant to stay the same. You should not be at the same place as a believer from one season to another because the seasons come and and uh, a lot of what will talked about on sunday was how the the things around you are helping you develop into that they are creating opportunities to build your faith to build you up to you get to amazing faith so not shunning those opportunities but walking in them and and welcoming them inviting them as Jill talked about in, in, in part one, these are all processes of getting to amazing faith because we have to be able to open the door for them. Open the door for where God is saying, no, 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 no. I need you to grow in this area. So there's going to be some things that are going to come your way that are going to hmm, help you, help you get to where I want you to go. Now, you're going you're gonna to feel it. And some of you are feeling it right now. But it's your opportunity to grow in amazing faith, to grow to your level of faith in this area. That's that that's the that's the that's the hope. That's the hope. Because that is what's going to sustain you. That is where God is saying, there goes my child, there goes my son, there goes my daughter. I hear them. I I I I, I smell them. I smell the aroma of them. I accept their offering because I am coming to see about them. I am working in their space. Hmm. So I have been meditating on, um, Joe made a statement in part one, and it said, um, amazing faith should translate to amazing love. <laughs> I was doing a whole lot. That part one was um, at the pop-up. I was doing a whole lot, you know, just trying to make sure things were, were in order, probably having a, a, a Mary moment when I should have been having a Martha moment. However, I mean, probably having a Martha moment when I should have been having a Mary moment. However, um, <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> I heard amazing faith should translate to amazing love. And I have, that thing has just 
permeated in my space over the last three weeks because you know it's like okay amazing love and you know if you just start with the fundamentals you know you know it's like, okay lord love is patient love is kind he's like oh, well you can stop right there you do not have amazing patience and you do have not have amazing kindness especially not in your not with your with your husband you know but in people in general you know i can be a little bit curt you know just want to do what i gotta do keep moving um and, but if it's a spiritual thing, oh, I'm gonna get in, in there, but just the frivolous things, but some of the frivolous things are the things that draw, that draw people into your space because of your kindness, you know? So kindness is not frivolous, <laughs> you know? Being gentle is not frivolous, you know? Everything can't be, you know, rah, rah, super, superpower, uh, spiritual, you know? Some things just have to be just the basics, you know? And that amazing, Faith should translate to amazing love. Just, just stayed with me, and I have, I have, I have recycled it. I have meditated on it, and I say, "Am I, am, am I operating in amazing love today? How can I, how can I cover this situation with amazing love? You know what? You know it has, it has. You know, because God, I want, I want to be where you are, and I want to respond to you in ways that are pleasing to you. And if it requires me to operate in amazing love then so give me the strength to do it. Give me the, give me the wherewithal to do it. Help me to notice and recognize when I'm not. So you can, can you put up my first slide for me? So um, it reads, love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And do this understanding the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber. I'm gonna stop here for a minute. It says, love does, does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. What that means is the fulfillment of all the commandments. You know, thou shalt not, the, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not, you know, all the commandments, thou shalt do these type of things. This, love is the fulfillment of it all. I mean, love covers all. Like when the word says love covers a multitude of sins, love covers it all. So in verse 11, when it says, and do this, you're talking about love, you know, so while you do this, while you love, understand the present time that you are in. It says the hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. You can take it down for a minute. The scripture says, do you understand what time it is? It, say, it says the present time. It says understanding the present time. You know, you, you can just take in one day of the news and you will understand the present time. That's what the scripture says. Do you understand what time it is? He said, while you're doing all these, these, these things, I want you to, you know, and, and I want you to operate in love, but I also want you to understand what time it is. And it says, and you know what time it is, it says, wake up from your slumber. So it says the hour has already come for you to wake up from your, from your slumber because salvation is near now than when we first believed. When you first believe, shoot, remember when we were younger and you just said, oh, Jesus, come back soon, you know. Salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. So whenever you first believe, you are further along in this thing than you were then. But are you responding as if you are further along? Are you awake as if you are further along and more is happening and we are getting closer to an end? than we were when we first started. Are you responding that way to the present time? You know, and I put here, uh, you know, sl you know, slumber, you know, I looked, I, I was, you know, slumber is different from sleep, okay? Sleep is, well, we all know, compute completely, you know, in our sleep state, you know, slumber is inactivity. Slumber is, is a, a, a lack of, of movement. It's like dormancy, you know, so you're not really sure what's going on. So it's like you're, you, you're not sleep and then, you know, but you not, but you're not also, you're not moving. So it says, wake up from your slumber. You know, it's almost like if you've ever busted in somebody's room and you say, do you know what time it is? <laughs> you better 
get up? Are you asleep? And they're like, no, 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 I ain't sleep. I'm about to get up. You didn't know if they were asleep or not because they were, the, the state of their being was no activity. They were laying dormant. So you, you questioned their activity. You questioned where they were. You're saying, hey, do you know what time it is? That's, that's what that's saying to you. That's what this is saying to us in the scripture. So the verse says, do you see what is happening in the present age? You know, meaning now. Do you see what's happening now? And then verse 12a, I was the beginning part. Matter of fact, you can put it up real quick. I want to I want to I want to show you all something. The same scripture. So in the first part of verse 12, it says, the night is nearly over, the day is already here. The night is nearly over, the day is almost here. So I put here, it's if the, the night is already over, it's past time for certain things because now something else is about to happen. So it says the night is already over, the day is here. So you can take it down. I put it's past time to keep setting things aside that you say you were going to do because the night is almost over and the day is almost here. It's past time for you to rest on this is just how I am. Because the night is almost over and the day is almost here. It is past time for you to not use your gifts for God's purpose. You're just sitting on your gifts. You know that you have something to offer to the kingdom, but you're waiting on something. The night is almost over and the day is almost here. That's what it means when it says the night is nearly over. The day is almost here because that means there's something you're supposed to be doing. You better hurry up because it's past time. You need to come out of your slumber. It's past time for what you're supposed to be doing. So now it says awake. It says, so I put here, I said, it was once for you about spiritual immaturity. You, won't, you just didn't know. You know, being immature, you just don't know. You just need to mature. But it has turned into spiritual complacency. Complacency means being satisfied and unconcerned with where you are spiritually. You have become satisfied and unconcerned with where you are or where you're supposed to be spiritually. And now it's become spiritual slumber. It didn't start off as spiritual slumber. It's become spiritual slumber. Because you are no longer concerned with where you are spiritually. And you're not sat and you're, 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 you're satisfied with where you are. We should never be satisfied. We should always be in a state of growth. If you are not growing, you are, you're dying. You should always be in a state of growth. You should always be waiting to hear where God has you, where he's taking you, where he wants you to be. Are you in tune? Are you walking in where he has for you to go? That's always the goal. And when we get too complacent, we miss the move because we're, we're slumbered. We're not, we're not even looking for it. That's why it says, wake up. It said, wake up. Verse, verse 12b is the second half of that first part of the scripture. It says, so let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. You have to set aside those things, the way you are, the way you have been, the fears that you have, you know, not, not, not living up to the God-given purpose that you have. You're going to have to set aside some of those things in your wake up so that you can move and do what you're supposed to be doing. You know, that's a part of amazing faith because you, because you, you may have gotten so comfortable that you don't, you, you don't quite know whether you can get from this point to the next point that that's you 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 may have gotten so comfortable with it you're not even sure there is something more that you're supposed to be doing there's something more that you're supposed to be doing because there's something more that we're all supposed to be doing you know in, in um my conversation with someone recently which and I, I may share closer to the end i kept saying what are we doing what are we doing because there's always a stirring in your spirit when you're not quite satisfied with where, well, where you are, where, where we are, where, where the world is, there is a stirring. It should be a stirring in your, it should be, it should be uncomfortable. As a, as a, as a spiritual being, being in this fallen world, there should be a level of 
discomfort and rightfully so. And if you don't have it, I would question if you become complacent in your spiritual walk. God, give me the fire. Give me a fire that I can't contain the song. It, you know, I ain't gonna sing it. You know, it's like set a fire down in my soul. One that I can't contain, one I can't control because I need you, God. I need you, God. You know, you know, Lord, set a fire in me. Set a fire for the things of you. Like it's my, it's my prayer that we keep a, 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 a hunger for spiritual things. Like when we say this is Sunday and Wednesday servings, like is you, no, we are plates to stay out, to put a serving on our plate. But, and, but it's not just about putting a serving on our plate for us to consume it. It's about putting a serving on our plate for us to be prepared to now serve, to prepare to now give, give that serving that we have received back to that lost world, to those who are seeking God in ways that they have yet to find him. But he, they, he put, he's put them in your space though. And we can see when people are hurting and they need more. And if we have it to give, because God has given it to us, it is our responsibility to serve. It is our responsibility to care about the things that he cares about. That is our response. It's, you know, Jill has said countless occasions, our ability to respond, it's responsibility. You know, it's your ability to respond because you can respond to how God showed up for you. So you know that he has that in him. If you, ain't, if you haven't, if you're still working on faith or some other areas that you haven't seen, that what you have seen, that's your testimony. What you have experienced, that's what you're serving back. That's what you're giving back. Um, can you put up a uh, slide uh, two for me, please? It says, for we are God's fellow workers, his servants working together. You are God's cultivated field, his garden, his vineyard, God's building. According to the remarkable grace of God, which was given to me to pre prepare me for my task, like a skillful master building, I laid a foundation and now another is being built on, on it. Now another is building on it. But each one must be careful how he builds for no one lay a foundation other than the one that is already laid, which is Jesus Christ. So it says we are, as you can take it down, it says we are his cultivated field, his garden, his vineyard. Cultivated is his prepared place. That's what cultivated means, to prepare the land, to prepare a place, to cultivate it. It says we are his, his it says we are his cultivated field. So we are his prepared place. You are prepared and I am prepared, but what are we prepared for? What are we being prepared for? Okay, verse 10 says, there was remarkable grace given to me to prepare me for my task. There's been remarkable grace given to each of us to prepare us for our task. We may not all feel that way. We may not all even see ourselves that way. But the word says there has been a remarkable amount of grace given to each of us to prepare us for our task. And what I'm going to say is we are accountable for that grace. We are accountable for what has been given to us. If someone gives you something, you, you're accountable for it. So are you thankful for it? You pitch it over, over your shoulder in a shrug? I don't care. But we are accountable for that. And if you don't know, like, God, what is my task? What should I be doing? That, that, that's some of your relational work with God between you and him so that you're not falling into spiritual, your spiritual uh, uh, slumber, complacency. Because remember that came from the immaturity is asking the questions. I don't know and I wanna mature in it. I don't understand. God, give me a deeper understanding. It's when we know we stop asking the questions and we just let it be. And when we let it be, Questions stop popping up because we're no longer interested. We're no longer concerned. 
we become satisfied. We put other things in our space that now have our attention. You know, so we're no longer even seeking the answers to some of these questions when we're studying his word and it's saying things like, uh, to prepare me for my task. Am I in position, Lord? That's my, what are we supposed to be? What are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? That was my frustration. What are we doing? You know, trust me, I got, I got, I got challenged with that. But it's asking the question so the spirit of truth can come back and rest with you and share with you and sit with you and comfort you or convict you. Whatever, whatever, because he may say, patient, be still, wait. He may say, I've already told you, I've already given you a word for you. You've yet to move forward in the word that I've given you. Because we, 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 we all have a different plight, a different journey. But we all have a journey. A spiritual journey, if you're a believer, is not just to, to, to get free and to keep it all to yourself. It is to care about the things that he cares about, which is this fallen world. And, and, and saving all those who are lost is to be in his field, his garden, is to go out and be able to produce fruit and to share that fruit with other people who are seeking the same fruit that you once needed. That's, that, that's, that's the goal. That's the goal. So I know that everyone doesn't move underneath the same understanding, but we do have to be mindful of certain things. We have to be spiritually mindful of certain things. In the natural, fruit becomes ripe if it's not eaten. It becomes stale, starts rotting, and eventually it'll start shriveling up. And if we are his harvest, that, that, will, that could be our, our, our journey if we aren't allowing the rightness of where we are, the right fruit, to be used in, in the season it's supposed to be used. You know, uh, and I think it was a scripture maybe in Galatians that um, a couple of Sundays Jill taught about, about it was never your intention to get hard, to get hard again. You know, it's, it was never your intention because re remember we said the, the, the field has been cultivated, it's being prepared, cultivated is breaking up that ground and preparing it to be able to produce fruit, you know, and it's, it's never your intention. If you cultivate something, it's to prepare, it's to use it. It's never an intention for it to get hard again. So you got to go through the breaking up process again. But that can happen if you don't do anything with that preparation. If you don't do anything with, 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 with where you are, with how you've gotten there, why you've gotten there. That can happen, that hardening. But it's, ne it's never um, our intent. So I put here, from an inside out perspective, how can we recognize if we are trying to lay some other foundation? So do you remember in the last part of that scripture, it says you can't build a foundation on anything. It says, it says for no one can lay a foundation other than the one which is already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now we try to erect things and build things, but, but none of them can support or sustain us. Now we do try to do it. But none of us can support or sustain us. And sometimes that's, that's kind of the progression of, of what, what, we're, what we're putting in our space, what we're building our space, what we're doing, you know, because we're not, we're not building the things of God, but we are sometimes building other things, you know, and I, and I put, you know, are you building your own agenda? Like you're self-focused, you know, you are, uh, you, you are into the things that make you feel good. You know, it's like the, pre the pleasure principle. You know, you're doing all these things, the sex, drugs, and videotape, the entertainment, the busyness, the, all the things in your space that are things that make you feel good. I'm self-focused. I have my own agenda with my time, with my resources, you know, with everything that I, I have for me, I'm using it for me to make me feel good about where I am. You know, it's the, it's the feel good party time. Is that what you're building right now? You know, you could be building a, um, a framework of fear, you know, you're restless, you're anxious, you're worried, you know, with seeing all the stuff that's going on in the world, 
you are not building a platform of faith. You're building a platform of fear because you stay worried. Some of us do a lot of fear mongering. You know, fear mongering, if you're not familiar with that statement, it's the deliberate arousal of fear and alarming and, and being an alarming other issues. So it's, it's deliberately arousing fear and alarm about issues that are going on. You know, it's constantly pointing out stuff. You know, are you that person? It's fear mongering. You know, you're the person who uh, constantly talks about prices in the recession. You keep pointing stuff out to people. You know, you're the person who keeps posting or forwarding, you know, breaking news about violent events and different things going on. You know, you, you are the person who uh, gets, keeps getting caught up in these political controversies and conspiracies and all of that energy, you know. Um, and, you know, I'm not going to mention the, the, all the COVID news, you know, the highs and the lows of COVID. But fear mongering is a real thing. It means you're building a platform of fear over faith. You constantly keep things in the space that would draw fear out of you and others. That's a real thing. If that's you, you, you like, I'm so in tune to the news. I'm so in tune to all these things. And I, and I constantly share it. And so see, what are you glorifying, elevating? What are you making greater than faith? That's a real thing. You know, it's a real thing. And you may have to be challenged. You may have to ask God to God, help me. To, to turn my eye, my ears from this and to be in tune with you, to be on a faith path and not a fear path. You know, uh, are you building a valley of despair and bitterness? That means you're stuck in discouragement, depression, anger, unresolved matters, unforgiveness. You know, that's a valley of despair. That's a valley of bitterness. You're not building faith toward, you know, God is going to, you know, I may have, I may be experiencing sorrow, but the word of God says, you know, blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. That's faith. That's faith talk. But if you just rest in the despair, like the Eeyore statement, you know, and went into poop, oh, woe is me. And he went through all these things, but he stayed there. He stayed there. Every scenario in, in Winnie the Pooh, you never saw ER have any level of joy or faith talk because he got stuck somewhere. He got stuck in his circumstance and he wasn't able to move out of it. Is that you? Because you're building something. But the word of God says in that verse 11 of that scripture, for no one can lay a foundation other than the one which is already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Because that's the only thing that's going to sustain you. You are going to build things, but they're not going to, they're, they're, not, they're not the rock. You are building things, but you're not building on the rock. You're building these unsustainable and destructive death, death breeding things, fear breeding things that will not get you to the sustaining grace that God has given you to, to, to meet this world in its present state. Because it's a present state, but we, but, but we have to grow in a deeper understanding so that we can, we can match faith with the energy of this world. That's the amazing faith that we're going to have to have that astounding, astonishing, surprising faith to match what's happening now. So... You know, I put, I don't believe people consciously build other structures. You know, I don't think that there are, there is evil in this world and there are people who are very intentional, but as a believer in Christ, I don't know that we are conscious in the fact that I'm going to build this other structure, but depending on what we are focused on can inadvertently have us pointing out certain things and responding to certain things, which create a building of these things in our space. And, and I put, we get caught up in putting effort and work into making what we see bigger than the faith in the unseen. So we get caught up making what we see bigger than putting faith in what we don't see. Putting faith in the promises of God, putting faith in the possibility that things can be different, the possibility that things will be different. It was a, a person in the Bible said, what if God changes his mind? What if he relents? 
I mean, that's safe talk. You know, it's like, cause you, God, we make that decision. He make that decision. But that's safe talk. When you were deciding, I'm just, I'm just gonna build, I'm gonna build something else. I'm gonna ele- elevate something else. So I put, we should acknowledge reality, but we don't form our responses through it. We should acknowledge reality, but don't form your responses through it. Amazing faith is recognizing there's a possibility that exists no matter the condition. So uh, can you put up, um, so what, well, hold on a second. So what if you are building other structures and you're saying, I'm not, I'm not operating in amazing faith. Right now, I don't. I don't feel, I don't feel like I have amazing faith. What if, what if that is you? You know, there is a, there's a response to that too. Because how do we get from where we are to amazing faith? You know, now you can put a, put a um, slide three for me. So it says, after three days, the officers went through the camp, giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, your God, and the Levitical priest carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will keep, then you will know which way to go, since you have never been this way before. But keep a distance of about 2,000 cubits between you and the Ark. Do not go near it. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. So, you know, and when I'm reading this scripture, I'm reading, you can, you can take it down. When I'm reading these, this scripture, you know, I'm reading it from the vantage point that it says, you know, basically listen to the spirit when the spirit, when the spirit moves, listen to it and move with it. That, that was the when the when the when the Ark of the Covenant moves and the Levitical priests move, we want you to move with it. So right now, if you're saying, I know I'm not in amazing, amazing faith, the spirit is always working. It is always working on you. When the spirit moves, listen to it and move with it. When it started saying, you know, a uh, thousand cubic feet and do this and do that, that the bottom line is take its direction. When the spirit moves, listen to it and take its direction. It ain't meant to go, this, this, you know, you just turn into Bible state. It ain't meant to go uh, above your head, behind you, next to you, just through you. It's meant to rest and reside on you. It's meant for you to take direction and respond. That's how you get to amazing faith because God has given you a word. He's given you a word. And then it says, once you've done all these things, it says, consecrate yourself. What's consecrating? It says set your, it means set yourself apart for a higher purpose. Joshua said, consecrate yourself, set yourself apart. Know that mm -mm, I'm meant to do something different. I'm meant to be in God's purpose. So I need to set myself apart for a higher purpose. And then he said, set yourself apart for a higher purpose and expect God to do amazing things. He said, for tomorrow, God is going to do amazing things. God is going to do amazing things through me. He's going to do amazing things through me. But it requires my amazing faith. It requires me to be able to set myself apart. God, there's a task. You, you've used your remarkable grace to prepare me for my task. And I set myself apart so that I can rest in knowing that there's there, there, there is things that you will have me to do. And then I'm going to wait because I'm expecting you to do amazing things through me. That's what I'm expecting. When you're focused on, when you're focused on what you see, you're typically focused on this. You're focused on the lack. You're focused on what you don't have. You're focused on what isn't so. You're focused on what appears to be what appears to be impossible, and you're focused on the situation. That's what you're focused on. That's what your eyes focus on, is focusing on. But that, 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 put up slide four real quick. It says, and what the land is, whether it is fat, productive, or lean, whether there is timber on it or not, make an effort to get some of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. 
I'm going to say it again. No matter the state of the land, basically, it says, and what the land is, whether it is fat, is productive, or whether it's lean, whether there is timber on it or not, make an effort to get some of the fruit of the land because now is the time of the first ripe grapes. You could take it down. That was saying, take your focus off of the situation, the state of what, what's happening, whether it's up or down, good or bad, X, Y, and Z, take your focus off of it. He says, I want you to go find the fruit, make an effort to bring back fruit. One of the best exercises, because we close in a minute, one of the best exercises that the women did was that group meeting platform for gratitude because it helped us practice looking for the fruit in our land. Because all we, all, all, all we were intended to do on that platform was it wasn't just chatting, chatting up. It was a gratitude platform. And we were identifying three things daily that we were grateful for, that we were grateful for. And even though people had challenges and in the midst of their gratitude, they may have posted challenges but they were identifying the fruit in the land. Even though all this stuff is going on, but let me show you what it is. Let me show you what I'm grateful for. Let me show you what I'm thankful for. It said, make an effort to find the fruit. Everything isn't bad, but if you are so focused on your situation, then you turn in your eye from the fruit, the possibility, what God is doing to what it's not. That's a trick. That's a trick of the enemy to focus on what you see. To focus on, oh, uh, uh, it's up. Oh, no, it's down. Oh, okay, it's up again. Oh, okay, it's down. That's a trick. He said, what's the, what's the fruit? Make an effort. Make an effort. That's your best. An effort is your best, your, your best to show up. Make an effort to find the fruit in the land. Because that's where God is. That's where he is. He's in the fruit. He's doing things. He said, oh, God is here. He said, all good things come from the Lord. If you can identify a good thing, God is in your space. And I know you can identify a good thing. So it's not all bad. It's not all anything. And that's, the, that's what we are, we, we, we are meant to do, even when things are all over the place. Go back, go back an effort to find that fruit. He said, because now is the season of the right fruit. So that's it. He said, make an effort to find it now. And it's in season. It is there. That ain't, that ain't, I'm waiting for it. There is something in your space that shows that there is fruit, that God is doing a work. He's doing a work in you, around you, through you. There's something there. Elevate that. Because when you elevate that, that's your amazing faith. They're saying, God, in the midst of all this, I see you. I see you. I trust you. I believe in you. I hold on to this. I'm thankful for you. Make that be your offering today. Amen. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Father God, for your word. I thank you for your spirit. I thank you for your truth. I thank you for comfort, and I thank you for conviction. I thank you that we are your field, Lord. I thank you that you prepare us. That you do a great mighty work in us, Father God. I thank you that you've given us purpose. I thank you for the truth that you speak to us, Lord. I pray that your word would do its perfect work for me and for the hearer of your word, dear Lord. God, we just thank you for the season that we are in, Father God. Because where there is much to be done, Father God, you will give us much faith, Father God to match it, dear Lord. We thank you for the task, Lord. Let us be about your business, dear Lord. We just thank you and we honor you for this day, God. We are grateful, Father God, and help us, Lord, to see the fruit. It's in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen.